Hello and Merry Christmas Eve. This video is going to be a little bit unorthodox. I figured since it's Christmas Eve and you're probably home spending it with your family, maybe enjoying a nice hot cup of cocoa, but you might find yourself in need of a little bit of an activity. So this video will, will provide you with that activity and it might even give you something that you can hang up on the tree. So for this one, I figured we might do this one in the kitchen for all time's sake. So follow me. Boy, this brings back memories. This comes at the request of Kieran and Rachel. Thank you so much for making me haul out all this techno junk and bring it into my kitchen. <laughs> but yeah, I'm doing it for them. They asked me, why don't you do a video in the kitchen again? We miss the kitchen. So I figured since this was my Christmas video and it was gonna be a little bit different from what I usually do, I could go ahead and shoot it in the kitchen. So that's why we're doing this in the kitchen. Now, for those of you that came here expecting tarantulas, yes, there will be tarantulas and I'll get to that in just a minute. But in this video, I'm gonna do a tutorial on how to do an origami spider. So I figured what more appropriate thing. It's kind of a crafty thing, goes along with Christmas. You can do it with your family. You know, you can make, you can make these things with your family while you're sitting around in Christmas, especially those of you guys in the UK, I feel for you. You guys are in lockdown right now. So um, this will give you something that you can work on. And it's not so easy that you can probably get it in one shot, but it might take a couple of tries to get it right so this is a fun activity that you can do and you'll be left with something that you can actually put on the tree as a decoration because not all cultures feel that tarantulas or spiders in general should I say are these creepy scary creatures some actually believe that they're good luck so that is the video that I'm doing today and uh, for those of you that missed and haven't seen my um, Christmas spider video, I'll post a link up here so you can check that out. It's a cute little story that goes along with some of these little ornaments that we create in our um, Etsy store. So anyway, that is what we're doing today. And for those of you that wanted to see tarantulas, check this out. I probably don't have to tell you how nervous I am about pulling this egg sac. I've been really wanting to be successful with this one. GBBs are considered to be a little bit difficult to get an egg sac or a successful egg sac from. So I'm kind of worried. I want it to be good. It would be pretty awesome for my first GBB egg sac to be good. So we will see. Oh, she's already kicking hairs at me. All right, so let's see if I can get her to back out just a little bit so I can see that, oh, she's still holding it. That's good. There it is. Oh, she does not want to let go. <laughs> Guys, it, it looks really good. It looks pretty full. I'm afraid she's gonna tear it. She is holding on for dear life. There we go. All right. So there it is. Pretty unbelievable. Nice little egg sac. All right, let's find out if it's good. Alright guys, forgive me if my voice seems a little shaky, but I am pretty excited right now. I don't know what I'm going to find in here. I 
things are looking pretty good, guys. Would you look at that? Those are eggs with legs. We got a good sack. So all I gotta do now is put them in the incubator and let them finish out. And we will be good to go. We will have some baby GBBs. How about that? So yes, I have successfully produced Chromatopelma cyanopubescens. Um, it was such a joy to pull that egg sac and have it be viable and have all those little eggs with legs inside there. And it wasn't too long after that, that when I put them in the incubator, I think it was like a day or two later, they already started molting out into first instar. So I pulled it just at the perfect point and I was pretty proud of that because a lot of people say that they're a little bit difficult to breed, not so difficult that they're rare in the hobby, but I hear a lot of people have some really bad luck with them. Sometimes the egg gets eaten, sometimes the egg turns out bad, and sometimes the females will eat the males and they tend to be notorious for that as well. So everything went well my first time around and that was a pretty good accomplishment for me. So I'm pretty proud of that. So from this point forward, there will be no more tarantulas. So if you want to tune out, you may do so. And uh, the rest of this is going to be the tutorial on how to create your origami spider. Now, the reason I chose this is because of course it is a spider. When I first learned this origami spider, um, I was actually teaching art. It was my very first year of teaching. And um, I bought this origami book and I was teaching my kids how to do origami. And the reason I learned it is because A, I love spiders and it was a spider so it looked pretty cool. It's probably the coolest thing on there. And B, it was the most difficult project in the book. It was at the very end of the book and it was the hardest one with the most steps. So I'm a person that likes a challenge and challenge accepted. I did it and it took me a couple of tries to get it right, but I actually got it to the point where I memorized it and I could do it at any time. And I would always impress people. I'd sit there and make an origami spider and hand them an origami spider. So maybe you can do that as well. And it's a really cool thing that you can have and you can put it up on your Christmas tree if you'd like, or you can just have it on your desk or somewhere and it makes a good talking piece. Sometimes people look at it and they're like, wow, did you do that? How did you do that? And so on, so maybe you can even teach it to them. So here is my tutorial on how to create an origami spider. For this, I'm gonna be using origami paper and origami paper comes in a perfect square. But you don't have to use origami paper. You can use a standard eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And there's an easy way to cut it into a perfect square. All you have to do is fold it diagonally on the side and make sure it matches the corner and then just fold it. Once you fold it, you can fold over the remaining flap along the bottom of the line. And this will give you the line for the perfect square. Once you have the line, you can just cut along that line or you can moisten it like I did by licking both sides and then it separates easy and you now have a perfect square. To start things off, we're going to flip the paper over and we're going to fold it exactly in half. And in some parts of this tutorial, I may speed things up 
when I show you how to do something and if the steps are repeated, I'll just speed it up so that we can get through them quickly. And one of the key things to origami is to do things as precisely as possible. So try to match up the corners as evenly as possible and then hold the paper down while you use your thumb to flatten the rest of it out. And this will ensure that you don't lose your corners. Once we have the paper folded in half, we're gonna use that halfway line to mark out the next fold and we're gonna half that portion to that line. And then we're gonna flip the paper over and repeat the same process on the other side. And once you have your paper folded over as such, we're gonna flip it over to the other side and we're gonna repeat the same steps again, folding in half and then halving those halves to the middle line again. So your paper should have a nice checkerboard pattern at this point. Now we're gonna fold our paper diagonally, making sure that we match the corners evenly, pressing down with our thumbs to flatten our edges. And then we're gonna repeat this for the other corner. So in the center of your paper, you should now have a square and we're gonna use that as a guide to fold our paper over to the corner of that middle square. And we're gonna turn our paper and we're gonna repeat this step for all four corners. Once we have our paper folded as such, now we're going to reverse the folds on the halfway marks, both on the horizontal and on the diagonals. Be very careful to follow the already folded lines so that you don't lose your edges. This step is important because it's gonna make it easier for you to do the mountain fold that follows these steps. So this next part is called the mountain fold and it's always hard to get it started, but once you start it, it gets a little bit easier. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna tuck in this corner and make sure that your lines stay nice and neat. So again, the, the very beginning part is a little bit tricky, but once you start tucking things in, then it just starts falling into place. Again, the key here is to keep your lines nice and straight and everything should be nice and neat and even. And I always flatten my edges to keep my edges nice and crisp. And you should end up with a shape that looks just like this. 
Next, we're going to fold the points of the shape to match the square edges on the top. Then we'll reverse the paper and we will fold the point inward like so. Flip it to the other side and repeat the process. And do it for all four sides. So we should end up with a rectangular shape like this. Next, we're going to do what's called a valley fold. And we are going to take the corners of this shape and we're going to tuck them inward. Now, I always start on the side that has a slit because the paper's softer there. There's only one ply of paper and it folds easier. And then I can tuck it into the other side. And you should end up with a little point like that and repeat this for all the sides. And I believe there are eight of them. And this will go on to make the legs of your spider. And I urge you to be as careful as possible with your corners. This shape right here didn't turn out as neat as I would have liked it. It's a little bit sloppy, but sometimes that's okay. And when you finish folding them all, you should end up with a triangular shape like this. This next part can be a little bit tricky, but you want to find the gap in between where it goes from one side to the other. And uh, I kind of have a hard time here finding it, but a good way to find it is just to kind of let everything loose and you will see it'll gape open just like there. You can see where the two blue edge corners are and then the white in the middle. So I'm going to grab the two ends and then I just spread it out. And it should flatten out to a nice little triangle like such. Now we're going to find the two inner points of the triangle and we're going to fold those inward so that they tuck in. Just like that. And we'll do the same thing to the other side. And it should still be a triangular shape, only you will have two points on the inside of the triangle, just like those blue ones on mine.
This next step I consider to be the most difficult part of this entire project. And what you're going to do is you're going to grab the two points and you're going to pull. When you pull, be careful not to tear the paper. But what I like to do is I like to help it along and I like to crease the corners of the points so that the paper kind of has somewhere to go. And that way when you pull, it will naturally want to fold in on itself, but this will help it along to where it folds in as best as possible. Now the idea here is to get the two sides of the paper that is folding in to kind of join each other in the middle, almost forming like a kite shape. Again, I'm doing the same thing on the other side. I'm creasing the points just to kind of help it along. And once I have them creased, I'm gonna grab both points and I'm gonna pull. And I'm gonna try to fold them in toward the middle. And it's okay if it gets a little bit crushed here as far as the paper is concerned. Eventually it will flatten out and it will look nice. But try to get them to get as close to the middle as possible. There we go, and this is what your shape should look like. Nice and flat. Now we repeat the same step on the other side. And once again, this side did not turn out as nice as I would have liked it to. It's a little bit sloppy, but sometimes that's okay. Now begins the part where your spider starts taking shape. So we're gonna fold it outward and you should have two points pointing down. And we're gonna take the top point and we're gonna fold that down to match those two points that are pointing down. And we're gonna repeat the same thing on the other side. And once we have it folded down, we're gonna take the point of that that should be facing down now and we're gonna flip it up and match it to the top of the fold. And we're gonna do that to the other side as well. Now we're gonna fold those inward and squeeze it down nice and tight and we're back to the other side. Essentially, we've created the shape of the spider. So now we're gonna take these little extra folds on the side of this little triangle, and we're gonna tuck those down, and that's gonna form the abdomen of the spider. So just kind of squeeze it down and bring the little leg down like that, and just kind of squeeze it. We're just making it take shape. We're not actually trying to fold anything or tuck anything. We're just folding those down and trying to make a shape with it. Once we've taken care of that, we now have uh, the overall shape of the abdomen. So now we're gonna start working on the legs by taking the point that is folded in the middle and we're gonna fold that down to make it flush with the bottom of the legs. So just fold it down like that and squeeze. 
and do the same thing to the other side. Make sure your corners are matched and you should end up with two little pointy flaps at the top. And we're gonna take those and we're gonna fold them over gently over the leg. And we're gonna do that to the other leg. And then we're gonna take those little flaps and we're gonna tuck them into the leg. There should be a slot where they should fit right in. It can be a little tricky, but once you get the hang of it, you can just tuck it right in and give it a squeeze. And do the same thing to the other leg. And that is basically the formation of the leg. So now we're gonna repeat the same step on the other side and we're basically creating the legs on the rear side of the spider. Whoa, what am I doing? Apparently my eyes aren't as good as they used to be so I keep bringing it closer and closer to my face and I forget that I have to keep it in the frame. So that completes the rear half of the spider. And now let's work on the front half. So for this, we're gonna take that point and we're gonna pull it outward and we're gonna fold straight on so that the point sticks straight and the legs kind of go beside it and they squeeze in. And that's gonna make the shape of your head. Once you have the shape of the head, you're gonna take the point of that and you're gonna tuck it in underneath and squeeze. It's kind of a square shape, but this is origami, not real life. So now we're gonna repeat the same process that we did with the legs on the rear. We're gonna tuck in that flap, make it flush to the legs and we're gonna fold the top flaps over. And you're gonna tuck them into the legs just like before. and then simply repeat it on the other side. And that pretty much completes the spider, but I like to add an extra step to kind of give it a more realistic look. I will bend the legs inward at about the halfway point. I just crease them over and that gives them a nice little joint right there because we know that spiders don't have straight legs. And 
and I do the same thing on the back. There, that's more like it. Now it looks like a spider. And that is pretty much it, guys. So how did you do? Did it turn out okay? Did it come out sloppy? Did it not turn out at all? Did you give up on me? If you did, then go back and do it again. Try it again. Pause it where you need to pause it, do it step by step. That's the best way to do it. And um, kind of, I kind of gave you little stopping points so you could see where, you know, where you should be at that point. And I apologize for some parts where I was a little too close to the camera or I was out of frame. Uh, my eyes are not what they used to be. So I was having to bring it closer and closer to my face so I could see what I was doing. And I completely forgot that I had to keep it in frame on the camera. But I think I got the important parts. And I think from that video, you should be able to produce that origami spider uh, and like I said you know if you didn't do it the first time around just try it again and try it different times there are some more difficult origami spiders out there um, that well, I would consider professional because they turn out looking like actual spiders or actual tarantulas and they use a lot softer paper but I'm not even brave enough to attempt some of those because they are really really crazy <laughs> and they have way more steps and in some cases, you even have to kind of twist the paper and so on, so they're real difficult. But this one is simple enough that anyone can do it. I've taught it to kids over the years, and it's complex enough that it looks cool. It looks like a little spider. So hopefully you were able to achieve that. And since this is my last video of the year, I want to wish everyone a happy or Merry Christmas, depending on what part of the world you're from and how you say it. And if you don't celebrate Christmas, I want to wish you happy holidays. And I want to wish everyone a wonderful and prosperous new year. I hope this new year brings good things and we get over this whole COVID-19 business and we can get back to life as normal. And that does it for me tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to support this channel, I have a Teespring store where I sell Tarantula Haven merchandise. Special thank you to my Patreon supporters. And if you would like to become a Patreon supporter, yourself i do have a link down below in the description as well as all the others and that's it for me i hope you enjoyed it until next time keep loving them tarantulas summer's here but also when it's cold and drear oh christmas tree oh christmas tree